the truth. My name is Scott, and my goal is to help anyone listening to apply greater truth to their life. Today, I wanted to read a paper that came out in the Ensign in the year 1976 that talks about whether or not the Constitution of the United States of America would actually hang by a thread, and if Joseph Smith ever said something like that. I've done a few videos recently about the Constitution. I apologize. I had to break up the one from Bruce R. McConkie into four parts just because uh, my voice goes out pretty quickly, and uh, I'm just constantly interrupted around here. But um, anyway, this, this paper is really interesting. It's important. I think the Constitution is very important, obviously, and uh, I'll just jump into the paper. It says, this is written by D. Michael Stewart from the BYU University Department of History. It says, the departments show that Joseph Smith did prophesy a number of times that the United States and the Constitution would be imperiled and that the elders would have, to, uh, have a hand in saving them. The first known record of the prophecy dates to July 19, 1840 in Nauvoo, when the prophet spoke about the redemption of Zion. Using DNC 101 as a text, he said, Even this nation will be on the verge of crumbling to pieces and tumbling to the ground. And when the Constitution is on the brink of ruin, this people will be the staff upon which the nation shall lean, and, then, and they shall bear the Constitution away from the very verge of destruction. There are also other documents in church history files that show that five different early saints recorded some remarks by the prophet Joseph Smith on the same prophecy, perhaps voiced by the prophet a number of times and in a number of different ways after 1840. Parley P. Pratt wrote in 1841 that the prophet said, The government is fallen and needs redeeming. It is guilty of blood and cannot stand as it now is, but will come so near desolation as to hang, as it were, by a single hair. And this has five exclamation points. Then the servant, servants go to the nations of the earth and gathers the strength of the Lord's house, exclamation point. A mighty army, another six exclamation points. <laughs> and this is the redemption of Zion, when the saints shall have redeemed that government and reinstated it in all its purity and glory. And then here's about like 12 exclamation points. <laughs> James Burgess related to that the prophet, while addressing the Nauvoo Legion several miles east of Nauvoo in May 1843, said that the time would come when the Constitution and government would hang by a brittle thread and would be ready to fall into other hands. But this people, the Latter-day Saints, will step forth and save it. Orson Hyde recalled that the prophet predicted that the time would come that the Constitution and the country would be in danger of an overthrow and said he, if the Constitution be saved at all, it will be by the elders of this church. I believe this is about the language as nearly as I can re recollect it. In a Pioneer Day celebration in Ogden, 1871, Eliza R. Snow said, I heard the prophet say the time will come when the government of these United States will be so nearly overthrown through its corruption that the Constitution will hang, as it were, by a single hair. And the Latter-day Saints... The elders of Israel will step forward to its rescue and save it. Jedediah and Grant, during the dark days of threatened invasion of Utah by a federal army, referred to the prophet's utterance as he addressed a Mormon battalion gathering in Salt Lake City February 6, 1855. What did the prophet Joseph say? When the Constitution shall be tottering, we shall be the people to save it from the, foe, the hand of the foe. On various occasions, Joseph Smith referred to the Constitution, the country, and destiny of the nation, and there is clear evidence that he anticipated full future peril. Furthermore, he pronounced the prophecy as various times and places. Perhaps he himself interchanged the simile on the brink of ruin, hang by a brittle thread, hang by a single hair, etc., to describe the anticipated crisis. It is also clear that the redeemers or rescuers of the Constitution were to be either the saints generally or priesthood officers specifically. Since no particular time was given for fulfilling this prophecy, members of the church have often wondered about its timing. The, prophes the prophecy clearly indicates a single identifiable episode yet to come. However, it is helpful for us to constantly be on guard against threats to the central elements of the Constitution. It is not wise to sit by and think that the protection of the Constitution is the problem of someone else at some other time. In support of this view of constant vigilance, it is 
most instructive to note that church leaders have seen the Constitution imperiled a number of times. Brigham Young, reflecting on the prophecy of 1868, expressed, It would not be many years before these words come to pass. President John Taylor in 1884 declared, It may be nearer than some of us think. President J. Reuben Clark Jr. warned in 1942, Whether it, the Constitution, shall live or die is now in the balance. Students of history and the Constitution know that the Constitution has been imperiled a number of times in its history and has been saved a number of times both by vigorous political action and by a vocal public opinion. Thus, rather than simply wait for the one time when the Constitution shall hang by a thread, Latter-day Saints must continually be vigilant. Our commission to save the Constitution is, like salvation, a continuing task, and church leaders have pointed out the tools available. Analysis of the constitutional principles, personal st study of the history of our nation, reading the Constitution to children at home and in schools, teaching them self-sacrifice, the principle that makes freedom possible, teaching them their obligations as mature citizens, recognizing and resisting ideologies that threaten constitutional principles, and developing loyalty to principle rather than to men or parties. Politicians and statesmen must grapple with tough questions, painstakingly familiarize themselves with vital issues, and be decisive. But finally, an antidote to abusive government, to corruption, and to constitutional peril lies in private character. Humble people and prayerful homes will contribute immeasurably to a lasting constitutional government, and it should be apparent that cons consistent efforts in these areas will prepare us both to continually protect the Constitution and to prepare us for possibly yet a yet future rendezvous with our Constitution's destiny. I think it's important to be familiar with the Constitution. That's why I made those previous videos. We can't save something that we don't understand. Um, the other day, I think probably a lot of you have already seen this, but there's this website called usdebtclock.org. And uh, I just wanted to throw this in here because I was looking at it yesterday, but it shows the U.S. national debt here going on 29 trillion, is that trillion, million, billion, yep, 29 trillion dollars going up every second and um, shows the spending, shows the debt per citizen is $87,000 and debt per taxpayer is $229,000, um, shows how much revenue we're bringing in and uh, interesting over here talks about how um, dollar to silver ratio now is 2,954 per ounce. I think right now silver is going for 21 something per ounce. Um, back in 1913, it was $2.66 per ounce. Um, silver markets being heavily um, manipulated by different banks, but very interesting to see what's going on with our financial crisis here. And um, anyway, I think I think we should all prepare to uphold the Constitution. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thanks. Bye.